Kathy Vick, deeply awake, and my hair is growing out now, and it's doing funny things, so um, I really wish that my hair looked as glamorous as I feel, but it don't today. Anyhow, um, I have a couple things to say, because uh, is it weird enough for you? It's going to get weirder. We've had a couple of wild cards already a la Weinstein and other things and um yeah the JFK information you think that's going to be released not while a uh, patriarch lives and breathes not, not until he's gone he's not gone yet but yeah, a lot of stuff is gonna is still gonna be released, and isn't it funny? It's all about people stopping the practice of keeping secrets for others. Isn't that lovely? As a group, just uh, I don't know. There's some freaking critical mass being hit, and sometimes it's a rogue individual who knows they can't live with themselves until. They share what they know. Lots of wild cards. And lots of people behaving super bad. So yeah, this is about uh, current events. It's about politics. It's about energetics. It's about personal responsibility. Evolutionary shift. Ascension. They're all rolled up in one. Um, it's just really amazing to me as I am easing into this reality, which is, I can assure you, different than anything I've ever experienced before on Earth. Uh, what I'm struck with is a, a, how, how, I really super agree with my life. I mean, I was talking to my son, and it was a high, it was a a mundane issue that had always been highly, 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 highly charged. I mean, so charged that it was like Trigger City, and no work ever got done. It was awful. Same cyclical behavior. And here we are. Same trigger. <laughs> Working it out. And I told him, you know, this is this is like. <laughs> I'm, we're going to stun the world with our, our uh, like, maturity. <laughs> it's just crazy. And then I'm uh, texting our, our sweet um, family member, our friend, my adopted daughter, who uh, has some time on her hands tonight, and we haven't seen her in such a long time, and Sam misses her. And so I'm, we're making plans for what we're going to do tonight. And I realized uh, the critic that was that was always breathing down my neck and speaking with my mouth is no longer here. I am not in argument with anything in my life right now. How is that possible? Look at what's going on. Look at what's going on. In this emotional feeding frenzy that people are on, I want to show you the example of um, the four slain soldiers in Niger. There's 800 troops on the ground there. It's a hotbed. And um, as understood through Rachel Maddow and my own research, Chad is sort of the nexus for the good guys. It's where the white hats hang out and um, figure out what they're going to do next. And Chad was put on the travel ban list. And um, the possible explanations for that, um, they're, they're so, it's sickening. It would appear as if it's because Chad ran out of passport paper and was una they were unable to submit to their new uh, passports to the U.S. government before the cutoff day and the U.S. government refused to um, accept or acknowledge 
um, you know, an, a replica, an older one, because the paper would be the same. So um, everyone was stunned with Chad being added to the travel ban list. It hobbles America because our, uh, is it called SATCOM or whatever, is located like in Europe, completely disconnected. So it's, uh, it's quite a conundrum why these four were killed. The circumstances in which uh, they were killed, it would appear that they just trusted the wrong tribal people. They were ambushed, and it was a mess. And there was no cover, and there was no help, and it was a disaster. And it's uh, on Trump. He's refused to speak about it. He's been asked about it by reporters. And on camera, he smiles and says thank you and leaves. Or just turns and leaves. And instead, we're talking about his putrid behavior toward women, once again. And how John Kelly, what he did, what he did. <sighs> to that soldier's friend from childhood, publicly. It's really disgusting, but it's not the point it's like, just why don't you just take a, a page out of um, a C, the CIA workbook, distract the public with something emotional and charged and hopefully racial, and hopefully there is a woman involved. Pile on, or you know, because uh, that way they won't see, they won't remember what's going on, the genocide going on in Puerto Rico. Maybe they won't notice that we're, in, we're uh, incarcerating young girls who uh, are, are pregnant and, and holding them against their will until they give birth. Until a, a brave 17-year-old stepped up and said, no, I want an abortion. And so the federal government just on Friday said, okay, you can have one. But the man in charge of detainees, of refuge protection, has no other experience but um, being a uh, protester of abortion. He's not medical, he's not, doesn't have counseling, but he flew down to that center to counsel her. When she asked to go to a clinic the first time, they, they sent her to one of those Christian uh, let's talk you out of it places. It's grotesque, it makes me ill. It makes me ill. It's it is it's 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 bad, and it would make me cry if I thought about it much more. It makes me angry. Doesn't it make you angry? I think the worst of it is that the Republicans are finally speaking out, and actually more uh, quickly than they did with Nixon. But they're doing it while they're jumping ship. And that just tells me that, and they've been very plain, Flake has been plain about it. He knows he can't get, he, he can't, he, he would lose a primary. It's the electorate, it's the people who are um, being stirred up. Bannon is an operative, okay? They're all moneyed. They're all moneyed by Russia. Follow the money with Breitbart, and you get to Mercer. Just check it out. And it's right there in our faces. At least this time. Nixon's crime was covering it up. Well, you know, he was a mobster too, but not of this caliber. And uh, so maybe the scales are falling from people's eyes. I don't know. But we have a problem. We we the government was sold. Tillerson and uh, Zinke and 
we're, we're, we're being looted. Isn't that obvious? But, you know, here's the personal uh, evolution and, and planetary ascension stuff. You ready? Because it gets good. I just wanted to make sure everybody's up to speed with only a few of the atrocities and the murderous, genocidal intention behind that health care bill. No one really, some, some, spoke of it. But having been an RN in the system, taking care of so many Medicaid patients, I was a director of nursing of one that was strict Medicaid. We did not take Medicare. We did not take anything but Medicaid. They'd die. Nurses would go out of work. CNAs would go out of work. It would restructure the healthcare system, and it doesn't matter. It, it just that it was it was positive was enough to, to to you know obviously. What's wonderful these days is that it's more obvious. It's easier to connect the dots if you're looking, but it's dark and twisty, and it leaves me sometimes feeling like simply a cog in a machine. A number valuable to faceless men in suits more valuable dead than alive but um, simply the value on a chart and to think that hasn't happened is you know kind of ridiculous to think that hasn't happened if you're poor in a country that is mad with consumerism Honey, you're in prison. You can't travel. You can't pursue your own interests without uh, consequence. And oftentimes you turn to crime, or what is considered crime. So, it's a mess. And the guidance has always been just, you know, it's going to come out. It's going to come out. Let it cook. Let it cook. Don't doubt. And that's why I want to come, because these are the times we have trained for. This is why we're here. Not to be aware of the politics. I mean, if you're not into politics, so what? Don't be into it. But uh, to think that, that what is happening in our government down to the state level doesn't affect you well then you're just being naive you're just being wholly American you might as well drape yourself with a flag this country is uh, a bit of a debtor's prison to be honest with you it's an exaggeration of what's been going on for a long time I urge you to watch Everything is a rich man's trick. There's a reason. Beyond simple incompetence and buffoonery that those JFK documents didn't get released as prescribed by law. It really is, we are at a red alert because it has been made abundantly clear that the people at the top do not recognize the law. Well, that should have been fairly obvious about 25 years ago, looking at this man and his behavior. He is a mobster. He's a con man. He's a crook. He's dirty as they get. He's a thief. He is a pirate, as is Putin as are the bankers who fund them. It's not about Russia being the bad guy and America being the good guy. Who's pulling the strings? Yesterday, yeah, there have been so many laws passed that um, make it impossible to fight back within the system. All right, keep making that impossible. It negates your system, dumbass. 
It's not the only system. And that's the point. You can step out of the madness anytime. It's someone else's fever dream. Does it affect you personally? Well, laws and rules and militarized police, yeah, they can. But that depends on where you vibrate. In fear or in something else. Fear and rage, control and rage, power. Those are the ways of the old, the patriarchy. The infection. It's the end of an age. Call it the Kali Yuga. Call it an energetic shift. Call it people waking up and smelling the coffee finally. But I think with all of the, um, you know, and the, I, I, I see the, the the terror and all this. I have a long enough view. I'm 56. This is it's so synthetic. It's designed to do a few things. Terror attacks. You want me to clue you in on what they're supposed to do for you? A. You gotta face your own mortality. Sudden death. You gotta at least consider it a possibility. So, that's traumatic. If you don't have the equipment, then what do you do? You have to have a, a, a conclusion in your mind when you're considering, oh, I'm going to go to the mall, I might, you know, there might be a sniper attack. You think kids don't think about that kind of stuff? They have to go through drills at school. So, it gets you comfortable with your own mortality, hopefully. And um, either decide to live or hide, basically. Um, but it can bring up other things, obviously compassion, but also it's, it's, uh, it's designed to make you scared. Notice that? So you better get comfortable or you're going to have fear. And that low rumble of fear and discontent and anger and, uh, I don't know, worry about the future, that's something these creeps feed off of. I mean, I've done enough tapes to explain. There's an energy, there's a signature to it, there's a flavor to it. It's an energy. Why is it hard to believe that there are people who benefit, who feel better, who actually function better when there is an environment of chaos and fear? And when the destruction is not only threatened, but real. So, um, you know, if you want to put it in light and dark terms, how do you beat that? By being at peace. Knock, knock. Fear's at the door. Going to answer it? You know what happens when fear comes? It's a neurochemical wash. You know you feel different when you're angry as hell or when you're sitting in a bathtub. Don't lie. You know that there's a different feeling, right? Sure. And that energy is hot and red and delicious to some. They need it. Who needs it? The ones who actively war. So how long are we going to do it? Is really the question. And the, the hardest thing to do is to gain your balance when it's highly imbalanced everywhere. But that's when it becomes um, imperative. And hopefully more than just a survival skill. But something that you get joy from. It's what Cryon has talked about with the new human. You can look up his tapes. What if the new normal is uh, a different reality every day? What about that? And he talked about, and I, I, I had a metaphor of a car. I think he had a metaphor of a car too. But, you know, the idea is um, you can drive around your crappy Studebaker. That's fine. But, um, you know, if you gear up the engine and... Um, 
how did he do it? I mean, I did I did something that that involved a in the end an invisible car. How did he? Oh, he did the surgeon. That you're a valuable medical, you know, your surgeon, and you have the same tools you use every single time on every single um, operation, and then one day you come in and all your tools are different. <laughs> what the hell are you supposed to do? But what you find is you use them is that they're even better, but they require they they require different skills from you, and they require that you change and and work with these new tools. You're still a very prized surgeon. In fact, now you can do things that you couldn't before. And there are a lot of uh, complications and, and things like that that aren't going to happen because you somehow can see better. So, you know, it's like that. And um, that is a new human. It's not just me. That's what I want to make sure is plain because the last couple of uh, few have been like, whee, look at me. And it's not like that at all. I'm, I'm using myself as an example. I'm a living example. That's all. That's why. And I don't think that it's appropriate for me to come here and say, hey, this is what you should do, knucklehead. Anybody I hear like that is like, well, screw you. You don't know me. Unless there's some kind of um, deference to a listener's own um, intelligence, and I know I say you know that, <laughs> or don't you know? I can I can be kind of combative. I know that, but I do it almost in jest because um, I don't know why, but I always think I'm doing these tapes for people who have just woken up. Isn't that weird? And they're so esoteric. I shouldn't be talking at that level at all. It's I think it it slows the process down at this point. But um, what I mean to say to end, I know I've kind of lost my track, but I, I, what I mean to say to end is that um, these events in government can make you quite distraught and angry and feeling so, there's no other word but impotent. Uh, it just like strikes you in your heart and your gut and your loins. It's like, ah, uh, just that's a, it's a that's a tricky thing. You want to do something. You need to do something for for someone else and yourself, and you can't. And you're built to do it. And you want to do it, but you don't know how. And I think we see that in the on the news. That's actually paradoxically a place where a lot of uh, good can come because when you recognize someone else's suffering, sure you can go to the angry place. You can go to the, the place of desperation and gloom. You know, it's never going to end. Or your heart can crack open in hope, compassion. If you believe there's a future that's better than this, and you know how it's possible, how is it possible? It requires individually that people come to terms with what they're doing. That's all. And assuming that people are okay with what they're doing when they're doing things that hurt others. They believe they're doing right when they are actually doing wrong. They're harming. They're servicing themselves and not thinking about others. It's pretty basic. And it's very, very personal. Where in my life am I selfish? Am I, do I have any service to self in me? The answer in my case is 
categorically 100% no. And it always has been. That's not how I'm dialed. So you can imagine who's been hanging out around me. The yin and yang service to self people. And that's been awful. And I realized, you know, it really is about service to ascension. It's going above. It's not staying in the service to self or the service to other. That is the victim, victimizer dance. That is the dance of bully and bullied. In my opinion, in my humble opinion. If you're going to err, err on the side of service to others. But do so actually, truly serving others. It's not possible to serve others and not serve self. <laughs> and that's the punchline. Healers are healed while they heal. When you help someone else, you are helping yourself. It's just how it goes. And um, the people who are really into the service to self, they need service to other people. <laughs> so it's really in rising above that whole dance, seeing the dances for what they are, played out on the government stage and in people's living rooms, in boardrooms, in churches. And um, all we can really do in the end is check our own integrity. It's not my job to um, instruct you <laughs> on um, your personal, you know, in my opinion, quotient of, you know, if you are a service to self or others. It's none of my business. What happens when we're together? And, um, you know, I just collide into people. I'm not much of a relationship expert. My point is that there's something bigger going on that, that goes beyond um, whether the people in the government are on, on the people's side or not. I think it's fairly obvious that the Constitution um, had in mind, the founders had in mind, that there would actually be a representative government here. And there are those who will say that even way back when it was corrupt. Maybe so, maybe not. I don't know. I don't freaking know. All I know is it's corrupt now. It's pretty obvious. And we can be very, 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 very grateful that it is so obvious. We're up in, a, up in arms and in a stew. Why? Because we finally know what's going on. We can finally recognize where we're being told lies. So, that's better than being in the dark, isn't it? I think it's great. And the crazier and more chaotic it gets, the more happy I feel. The more peaceful I am. And the more in alignment I am with myself. The more in agreement I am with my humble little life. So, um, it is possible to look at the news and not be distressed. But last night I failed that. <laughs> there was so much that was just so distressing. And I think I listened to about five minutes of it. And I went, oh, I fell asleep about, I don't know, eight. <laughs> and I woke up at two. And I um, consumed my daily portion of Rachel Maddow and Lawrence O'Donnell. And I got my view. And it's very helpful. It's not all the information, but um, I don't, I'm just really kind of off. I'm, I'm not using Facebook like I used to, and um, I'm just not checking in quite as much. It's okay if I, I trust the um, integrity and the training of Rachel Maddow. I think her um, credentials speak very highly of her um, output and her um, reliability as an observer. <laughs> I love it that she's got, she's kind of sassy. <laughs> or she's getting sassy. She's never been sassy, but wow, she's getting sassy now. It's awesome to see. So, um, are we allowed to change and grow? 
Yes, that's what this is all about. And um, that means that you drop certain things from your repertoire and add others. And um, I think that living proof is that conversation I had with my kid that just was like, wow, <laughs> we're grown-ups. Shit. You're not screaming at me? You're not holding you're not holding me responsible for whatever the hell you were always holding me responsible for. Whoa. Whoa, and I'm not acting like a like a bitch. Whoa. High five this. It's really a wonderful thing. And um I I know that I'm on the tip of the spear, right? But this is my experience now. Everybody got to see what my experience was since April of 16. On camera. Live. No editing. You saw the chaos. You saw the tears. The confusion. But the determination and the creativity. And the, oh my God, the information. And now you're seeing this. I believe peace is possible. Not only that, I know it's possible. I look at this uh, situation and I wonder how, how many... It really is a generational thing. This is not going to resolve in a couple weeks. But um, the generations are in on it. We've got gen a generation coming up that just will not tolerate this nonsense. And um, some sneaky shit's in there too. The, you know, the rich ones. But there's... You just... Just wait. <laughs> just wait. Nothing is going to stay the same. Nothing has. Nothing has. Why would you think that's going to now? And to those who need to have nothing change day to day, I hope you're doing okay. That's got to be tricky to keep that much control when the universe is hollering at each of us to surrender and let go and let the flow take them. To close, I'm going to remind everybody about um, how the book uh, by Richard Bach called Illusions starts it starts with a, with a parable uh, there are creatures who lived um, in the river with the with the water flowing them all flowing over them always and it was a rough current and the creatures clung to the rocks and one day one of the creatures said I wonder what would happen if I let go and went into the current it looks like a good time and um, everybody said, oh, holy crap, don't ever do that. You'll get killed immediately. It's going to be the end of you. Don't do it. So um, one day he finally did it. He let go. And he got banged up, really banged up on those rocks. But he didn't cling. He kept going. And he went with the current. And then, a little bit while later, downstream, he comes across some other creatures, you know, who are clinging to the rocks, and here he comes. <laughs> and they say, look, look, it's the Messiah. Someone who has transcended physical matter. And he said, no, I just let go of the rocks, you guys. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and he kept on flowing. <laughs> I'm adding the profanity. And I think these are those times. Honoring our, you know, manufactured and real history, but honoring ourselves. Going beyond, being of service to people who are not of service to us. It is the Super Bowl of light and dark, of this dark energy. It is so weak. It, I mean, it's not, there's, there's, there's just, there's, there's nothing to it. 
And there, there had been a quality to it that was quite strong. And it requires, it requires that anger and craziness. What does it imply if it's getting weaker? I think it implies that more of us are aware that really it's a trick of light. This shadow, this fear, this terror, the subjugation and the tyranny and the intrigue and all that. It's just a light show. The lights have gone up. The shadows are more acute. It's just what happens when the light comes up. Let it keep coming up. You know how that happens? By holding yourself in high esteem. By allowing your soul to guide you to a place where you can let yourself off the hook for your many deep, dark transgressions that turn out to be trick handcuffs. That's how it felt this morning. It's like I'm off the cr I, I finally hopped off perhaps the very last cross I w I'd, I'm going to be on. I, I was I was really um, not okay with myself having made a decision which had to be made. It was entirely appropriate and entirely loving. But until I realized it had been an act of love, I was tortured by it. I don't think that this is um, my mind finally delivering a way, an anesthetic, a way that I can live with um, what, I, what I did. Because I didn't do anything bad. I, I was a good, I, I was very loving, and I continue to be insanely loving. <laughs> if it, if it were clear, but it's not. It doesn't have to be. I hope I'm not talking code. What I am trying to get across is that um, I, I preach the gospel of letting yourself off the hook. And it was only today that I really felt like I... I whew, man, I can walk. I actually can walk around. <laughs> I'm not dingle-dangling and asking for help all the time. This is fabulous. And I think that was really more of a, a soul gift. Maybe I needed the... Um, the um, confusion in the work. Maybe I needed to struggle with all of the issues that I've been dealing with that hit me very personally, but that I could see were universal. Maybe. Maybe it was for this work. <laughs> or maybe the work was a result of life events. I don't think it really matters. It's beautiful, intense, prophetic, profound. It's my gift. It's myself. And this part of it is yours. There's so much that um, I uh, can't language, don't want to, that I hold sacred and keep dear by enjoying it rather than describing it. And um, that's a hard thing for me to understand because I'd like to, I, I, somehow, I think it's because I used to, <laughs> a lot of my friends do, I used to just long to be able to touch a person's skin and, and feel them and they could understand what it was that I was seeing and understanding. And um, we could share an experience like that. <coughs> And then I come to find that so many of my friends um, have the same longing. So um, it's it's learning the energetic boundaries um, 
I get, I think I'm actually um, more socially, I'm kind of weird, but socially um, equipped than I give myself credit for. And it's understanding these energetic boundaries that I think I can really be quite comfortable. I hope this has helped. Ever since I had a comment made to me that I wasn't making sense, it, it's really kind of um, dogged me that I'm clear and I'm not tangential and I'm uh, fleshing things out. So a little bit of doubt there, huh? But just used to be more conscious of what I'm expressing. Um, but these are the times I think of 40-40. Of um, self-reflection and of um, realizing that uh, after all is said and done, I am a social creature involved in a social experiment or a social experience and that's where I'm headed. My hermit days are over and I never knew how I break them. I didn't know how. I, I just I felt everything so much and I hurt as a result because I didn't understand what was going on or how to relieve myself of the pain I felt um, looking upon the behavior of others that I found so grotesque and still find grotesque. But through it all runs love. And the players that are taking on the roles of the grotesque are doing such a faboo job. They're really masters. And I high-five them. There's just too much light on this planet now. It's not working anymore for so many of us. The fear and the the terror stuff and the chaos. That's what it's about. Smiling and whistling as I walk through the wreckage. As I form, maintain, encourage bonds with people who love me and who I love. And um, being open to the ones who hurt. I know how to handle them. I've handled them my whole life. But they no longer rule. I rule. I say when and where now. So it really is true, you know, learning more about myself has gotten me over myself. Yay. <laughs> so I've had lots of dings, quite popular. And oh, 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 I go eat Vietnamese food now. Yes, I get to eat Vietnamese food and be with my friends. And I can't hardly wait. And I think that they were texting. So I hope I didn't miss anything because I'm late. Oh, but I had to create this. I wanted to give it away. I need to publish it real quick. Thank you so much for listening. I hope this has helped you. I know it may be long and torturous and may not make a lot of sense. But please understand what's happening on the outside is a reflection. It's, a, it's instructive. It's not to tell you you're bad and murderous or anything like that. How do you feel when you look at it? If it's designed to provoke, what's it provoking in you? Check your safety levels, your hope levels, your love levels, your anger levels, your desire to control and manipulate. And feel into that love. It's always there. The love that created you. The non-physical portion of yourself that's there to help you figure all this crap out. And you may be one like me who's at peace. And we know where home is. And uh, it's nice to be there. So, greetings from home. I have to go. I'm so excited. I love my friends. All right. Namaste.